Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Yes. Uh, presenting the case of a 58-year-old male patient uh, who was a known case of systemic hypertension since two years and dyslipidemia since one year. A uh, patient came to the ER with complaints of tingling sensation over the whole body since four days. A uh, patient was apparently normal four days back. On uh, Sunday morning, he started developing tingling, uh, pins and needle sensation over the right upper limb fingers. Within three to four hours, his sensation progressed to the right shoulder and then started progressing from the uh, left hand and towards the left shoulder. Uh, by the evening of Sunday, uh, Sunday evening, he started developing tingling sensation from his lower limbs also. Uh, he had gone to a nearby hospital, uh, however, there was initially no symptomatic improvement and by next day uh, morning, he uh, had difficulty walking due to the tingling sensation over both feet. However, there is no difficulty in moving the limbs or uh, turning from side to side or getting up from seated position. Uh, by the time the patient came here, he had uh, difficulty in walking and he had said the symptoms had progressed up to his abdomen and chest also. Uh, there was no other complaints of uh, difficulty in vision or uh, difficulty in swallowing, hoarseness, difficulty in breathing and there was no recent history of fever, uh, gastrointestinal infections and all. Uh, so otherwise, uh, initial examination, the patient was conscious and oriented, uh, pulse rate was 100, BP was 160-100 mmHg, saturation was 100% at room air, respiratory rate was 70. Uh, on examination, uh, general exam... Can you tell something about single breath count? Uh, his single breath count was uh, 40, sir. You had uh, no difficulty. In it, mm -hmm. What is single breath count? Um, what is the importance of single breath count? How do you monitor the patient? Uh, so in uh, patients with GBS, they might uh, go into a respiratory paralysis mm -hmm. also. So, we want to monitor for it. So, it, if it is dropping down, then it is significant. Significant. Um, on examination wise, uh, there was no cranial nerve impairment, cranial nerves were all uh, normal. Uh, on examination of the motor system, uh, there was no uh, there was no weakness, power was 5 by 5 over both upper limbs and lower limbs. Uh, sensory examination also, there was no uh, sensory loss okay. of uh, touch joint positions okay. and all. Uh, on examination of reflexes, uh, the superficial reflexes were uh, intact, corneal conjunctival reflexes were present, however deep tendon reflexes were absent, uh, including uh, biceps, triceps, supinator, knee jerk and ankle jerk were absent, plantars were mute on both feet. Uh, so on examination of gait, patient had an ataxic gait, uh, but uh, other cerebellar signs like nystagmus or dysarthria or tremors were not present. Uh, Rhombox was also positive and uh, skull and spine was normal. Rhombox is a uh, test for which uh, part of the CNS? Uh, posterior column defects. Posterior column. Uh, on initial ABG, sir. So, Rhombox test is positive. Rhombox was positive, sir. Okay, vibration sense? Vibration sense was intact. He was intact. able to. Do, yes. Okay. Vibration joint position was intact. However, on standing and asking to close his eyes, he had this. Okay. Okay. So, so diagnosis, sir. Mm. Uh, probably in uh, guillain barre syndrome. Probably mm. an acute demyelinating polyneuropathy. Okay. What is the typical feature of guillain barre syndrome? Is it typical of guillain barre syndrome? Uh, no, sir. In a patient will have an acute flaccid paralysis mm. with areflexia will be mm. present mm. and an acute onset of symptoms. Okay. What will happen to the sensations? Sensation is intact. Normally it is intact, but some patients complain about sensory disturbances. What will happen to the bladder? There is no bladder involved. There is no bladder. Guillain. So, uh, acute muscle weakness, hyperreflexive or areflexic muscle weakness starts from the lower limb. Then uh, there is no sensory loss, there is no bladder okay. involvement. Then probably it is a uh, uh, like. <coughs> Neuropathy, that neuropathy. is neuropathy means it is uh, Guillain Barry syndrome. Yes. What type of neuropathy it is? EBS. What type of disease it is? Element type of condition. Ah. Acute demyelinating? Polyneuropathy. Polyneuropathy, yes. okay. What, how do you diagnose it? Uh, so, diagnosis is one based on the clinical uh, symptoms or signs that the patient has. Hmm. Uh, then, based on the. Clinical uh, symptoms? What are sy clinical symptoms? are? For uh, GBS, against GBS? 
uh, in this patient for GBS, uh, the acute onset of the symptoms, mm. uh, the uh, the progression of the disease that is very rapid. Okay. Uh, then patient is having this paresthesia. Okay. And again, since this patient is not having any limb weakness. Okay. But reflexes. Uh, reflexes are also absent. That is uh, for uh, diagnosis okay. of GBS. So normally, GBS means what we have read in books. Uh, it is ascending type of weakness. Lower limb will be involved. Largest nerves will be involved. Then it ascends up. When it is reaches your knee joint, it starts from the upper limb like that. Okay, there are some variants where uh, you may not get the typical features. What are the variants in GBS? Uh, the most common is it's AIDP, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. Okay, what is the importance of AIDP from other? What is the classical feature of AIDP from other variants? So whatever you are told, that is yeah. AIDP. Yeah. AIDP is nothing but uh, Guillain Barre syndrome. Barrett. Okay. Then other can other uh, other ones include a uh, uh, Miller Fisher syndrome. What is it? Miller uh, it's Fisher characterized syndrome? by ophthalmoplegia, hmm. uh, ataxia, and areflexia. Okay, it starts uh, as a descending type of weakness. It starts from the cranial nerve. Ataxia will be there. Then patient develops upper limb weakness, lower limb weakness. It's a descending type of uh, uh, paralysis. Then. Uh, then there is a pure sensory variant. Okay, there is a sensory variant. Only sensory uh, type of Loss problem of will be there. Then. Uh, then there is acute motor type axonal neuropathy. Okay, motor type that will be exactly like your Guillain Barre syndrome. Then. then there is acute motor and sensory axonal. So neuropathy. together, both the motor and sensory will be there. The other last one. Uh, pan dysautonomia. Dysautonomia. How do they present? Uh, they will present with extreme variations in uh, their uh, heart rate and uh, blood pressure. With okay. The sweating. Okay, so sweating will be like uh, you can see some area will be sweating more, some areas will be sweating less. BP will be hypertension, hypotension, tachycardia, bradycardia, ECG changes, STT changes. So many uh, problems can happen. Okay, can these problems be there in uh, uh, GB syndrome? Dysautonomy? Yeah, yes, yes. Dysautonomy is one of the Sometimes. major problems in emergency room or ICU in GPS. Okay, how do you diagnose it? How do you diagnose after this? So you have differential diagnosis like this. How do you diagnose? A CSF study can be done. CSF study. What will be the typical feature? The typical feature is uh, albuminocytological dissociation. Hmm. Uh, that is characterized by elevation in uh, CSF proteins, but the counts will be normal. What are the differential diagnosis for uh, albuminocytological disorders? Sorry, dissociation. dissociation. Um, Where else you get like this? Uh, when there is a, a cerebral bleed, that can causing uh, increase in protein levels. No. Mm. Multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis. You can get something like this then. A spinal tumors, which can cause an elevation. Freund syndrome. Of, uh, compression of the compression spinal. Compression of spinal cord. Okay. Then. Mm. Transverse myelitis is one of the most important condition where you get. There is an inflammation going on, but there is no infection. There are infectious transverse myelitis, non-infectious transverse myelitis. Non-infectious transverse myelitis, you can get slight elevation of protein. Hypothyroid coma, again, you can get some amount of uh, increased uh, uh, albumin in the CSF. So, these are the differential diagnosis for albuminocytological dissociation. Other than that, no, other uh, other investigations. Oh, um, um, NCV can be done, sir. NCV should be done. done. What happened th in this patient NCV? Uh, in this patient's NCV, sir, it was done uh, after we had started the patient on treatment. Okay. So, there was no particular uh, significant findings in the NCV. Okay. So, patient had already received some treatment out elsewhere and here also yes. he received uh, IVIG. IVIG. So, no, by the time uh, you got an NCV test, it was normal. It was normal. Okay. Normally, what will happen in NCV in GBS? Uh, normally, in a demyelinating uh, neuropathy, uh, hmm. there will be prolonged uh, prolonged distal latencies okay. uh, or uh, prolonged conduction velocities. Okay. Um, what are the two types of conduction disorders in ner nervous tissue? Um, demyelinating and axonal, axonal type. Which is more uh, prominent or uh, which, oh, which can produce more prominent symptoms uh, axonal and axonal neuropathy axonal will have more uh, symptomatic uh, they have more symptomatic and recovery uh, recovery is delayed in axonal delayed. whereas in demyelinating disorder uh, they can have acute weakness but recovery is possible in that type of disease not in axonopathy axonopathy takes longer time okay 
so that can be done anything else you want to do in this patient for investigation huh? um you can check the uh, blood investigations hmm. check for electrolytes which electrolyte you want to check potassium potassium what was the potassium in this patient potassium was 4 sir 4 okay so oh, suppose it is hypokalemic paralysis well, there is one of the strongest differential diagnosis for acute weakness especially those who are having hypertension how do they present acute onset of uh, weakness over all the four limbs all the four limbs will, will limbs will be together they will mm. develop weakness, weakness. and uh, they have a reflexia yes, okay then what will be the preceding or uh, uh, predisposing factor in that uh, uh, hypokalemic periodic paralysis predisposing factor mm. diet what diet um, carbohydrate high carbohydrate diet. diet okay so high carbohydrate diet will be uh, uh, like uh, one of the common precipitants of hypokalemic periodic paralysis other differential diagnosis acute muscle weakness what else it could be due to infections like uh, uh, lyme's disease lyme's disease okay um conditions like uh, poliomyelitis polio is not a differential diagnosis for uh, gbs there is one one hand or one limb weakness that occurs at uh, younger age group small children botulism botulism how do they present uh, uh, descending they also have descending type, type of paralysis. weakness any insect bite can produce weakness tick tick paralysis tick that is also can occur so hypokalemic peri- periodic paralysis hyperkalemic periodic paralysis uh lyme's disease tick paralysis uh what Motilis. else mortality mm-hmm. these are the common differential lyme how do you treat this patient how did you treat uh, so this patient sir initially after the investigations mm-hmm. and other factors were ruled out uh, then we had started him on an uh, iv ig mm-hmm. uh, the dose given was 2 g per kg for f- over 5 days okay uh, so initially and then we had also sent for uh, ganglioside antibodies okay. uh, which had come out uh, strongly positive to gm1 okay uh, after starting the patient on ivig gradually patient improved over a span of 2 to 3 days okay uh, then he was advised to continue physiotherapy um, for uh, if ivig patient develop reactions or hypotension shock what is alternative uh, plasma pharesis plasma pharesis can, can be done okay steroids steroids are not indicated in gb okay <coughs> okay in a, a, i see what else you take care other than this ivig uh, electrolyte imbalance or plasma pharesis what else you have to do in icu if the patient is admitted in your icu what else thrombo that is very important any patient admitted in more than 20 48 hours in your icu especially gbs you need to give heparin okay heparin or low molecular weight heparin whatever it is compression stockings So that also should be taken care. Bladder. Is is she yeah, is he she having? Having any bladder uh, okay. complaints? Okay. Suppose patient is having uh, anuria in GBS. What are the possibilities? Anuria is there in a patient with bilateral lower limb flaccid paralysis. Sometimes what happens? GBS will arrest at middle level. Then he will have only weakness in the lower limb. It may not progress. So in that case, he will have paraplegia and uh, some patients can have bladder involvement what is the reason for bladder involvement what type of patients will develop bladder involvement bladder involvement is actually not there in gbs syndrome but some patients can have bladder involvement especially in those who are having prostatomegaly those who are having prostatomegaly most of the time they try to avoid with abdominal muscle compression so they do that okay so when the patient develops uh, abdominal muscle weakness they will not be uh, able to void the urine in that patient you need to catheterize okay but that can create sometimes confusion when you are clinically treating the patient you may confuse with transverse myelitis but transverse myelitis will have one typical feature what is that that will have a typical feature transverse myelitis can be differentiated from other types of weakness it is sensory level so in a, uh, you get a sensory level in the abdomen or thoracic area transverse myelitis any cns central nervous system lesion can produce paraplegia 
central means brain any brain lesion can produce paraplegia is it possible some normally paraplegia we take mri of uh, spine. spine any conditions you can get uh, lesions in the brain which can produce paraplegia which which artery involvement can be there anterior cerebral artery unpaired anterior cerebral artery uh, st- stroke one of the classical feature is lower limb weakness but there also bladder is not involved that's how you differentiate from the spinal cord lesion to cns lesions central nervous system is different from spinal cord okay. so anything else you want to add you want to add anything else Cornus medullaris is, uh, what is it, Cornus medullaris and Corda equina syndrome. That sometimes bladder will be involved. If the bladder fibers are there, then it will be involved. Otherwise, uh, they can have lower limb weakness. Corda equina, how it is different from Cornus medullaris? Corda equina is asymmetrical weakness. LMN, asymmetrical weakness. Corda Cornus medullaris, uh, UMN, symmetrical UMN type of weakness. If bladder fibers are involved, then it will become an LMN bladder. Anything else you want to add? No, sir. Nothing. Covered everything. Antibodies associated with the different okay. types okay. of. Uh, okay. Uh, so, in uh, acute inflammatory demyelination polymer neuropathy, GM1 ganglioside 1 is affected, uh, which was seen in our case. Uh, similarly, for AMAN and AMSAN, Mm, GM1 will be positive along with GD1A will be positive. Okay. In Miller Fisher, it's a different antibody GQ1B which is okay. involved. What is the age of the patient? He was 53. So, do you suspect any malignancy in this patient? Uh, he didn't have any complaints of weight loss, there was no lymphadenopathy. Okay, very rarely in elderly individuals because of the malignancy, paraneoplastic syndromes can present like a GBS. Okay, so the patient can have malignancy somewhere else and patient can develop. GBS like features. So, any elderly individual coming with uh, this type of problem, we have to check for other areas also, like just a chest x ray, ultrasound abdomen, prostate, like that, we have to look for. Okay, thank you.